So now, um, having seen the basic components of a language, it's um, worth getting a sort of brief idea of how we're going to break these languages up. So this is just an overview. We'll come back to this um, quite a lot more. So first stage is generally this idea called lexical analysis. And lexical analysis is to do with taking individual characters and clustering them together into words or tokens. So looking at this fragment of code, I've got a lot of characters. Um, I can see alphanumeric stuff, I can see uh, punctuation, I can see e equals, all of these things. And what I want to do in the context of C is to do a lexical analysis to work out what kind of thing is each of these characters in. So the first thing I can do is look for keywords. So in this context, keywords are things like int, char, while. I could also imagine things like um, if, for, um, unsigned, float, double. If I see these, if I see characters int, then they should be grouped together into an int keyword. They have special meaning to the compiler and they're treated differently than other identifiers. So you mentioned identifiers, we can also find the sort of user-defined names within the language. So an important difference between keywords and identifiers in this case is there's a finite set of keywords that are defined by the C language specification. However, the identifiers are actually defined by the user and it's essentially an unbounded space of identifiers. Um, realistically, there's limits on the length and the number of characters, but I can take Wibble and turn it into Wibble 0 or Wibble 00 or Wibble 0000. So there's actually a, a huge, if not unbounded, space of potential identifiers. But we do need to be able to tell whether any particular sequence of characters is an identifier. Um, other things we can see in here are operators or punctuation also comes under this. So all of these things like equals, semicolon, um, greater than, these are not treated as keywords, um, but they're treated as um, slightly different class of thing called operators. But again, it's still finite, it's still de defined by the language specification itself. Then we have literals. So these are things like numeric constants, or they could be string literals that appear in there. So they're pieces of data that are embedded in the program itself. So for example, an identifier like Wibble is naming something. Um, and that name could refer to different things in different parts of the program. The literal zero or one is a piece of data, and it means essentially the same thing wherever it appears within the program. Zero is always zero, one is always one. So looking at this program, we've now covered all of the characters in this program with tokens, except the space between the tokens. So in the C language, white space is not in and of itself meaningful, except um, that it actually separates tokens. So we can see here that there's, there's actually no gap between this main and this curly bracket, but this is actually a separate token from this. In the case of int and argc, if this space character were not here, that would actually turn into the identifier int argc. Um, so white space can be quite meaningful in terms of breaking up tokens and working out where one token finishes the next one begins. Um, okay, so that's all of our lexical analysis. The next stage is grammatical analysis, which is taking these tokens, taking these things, and turning them into nested structures. So the th three levels I'm going to look at here are declaration statements and expressions. So if I go looking for declarations in this fragment, I've got one giant declaration here. Well, it's actually a definition rather than a declaration. It's saying there is a function called main. It has the function prototype we can see at the top, and the body is defined to be this thing here. I can also find sub-declarations here in that within this body of this function, I am declaring this thing called argc with type int. I'm also declaring argv of type char star array. <clears throat> so within that, that declaration, there are actually sub-declarations. So 
names that are only meaningful within names. So this x is meaningful from this point on. However, once I get out here, that x is no longer meaningful because it's gone out of scope. And that's to do with the nested structure. Um, I can then go looking for things like statements. So here is a single statement, x equals a to y. Here is another distinct statement, in so a while loop in this case. But because statements can be nested, I can actually find a substatement, the body of the while loop, within this outer while statement. <coughs> Going further, I can also find expressions. So things like x, it is an identifier, but an identifier is a kind of expression. I can classify it as an expression. Similarly, on the right-hand side, this a to y, this function call, is also an expression. Um, the condition on this while loop is an expression saying whether or not this while loop should quit. And just like we can have nested declarations and nested statements, we can also have nested expressions. So within this function call, there is one expression that gives the name or the, the thing that should be called. And this doesn't have to be the name of a function directly. This could be the name of a variable or it could be something much more complicated as long as it's an expression that returns a thing that can be invoked. Um, and within this code here, you can see I have an expression i greater than zero. On the left hand, of one, left hand side of one is an expression that is an identifier. On the right hand side is an expression that is a constant. So there, there's, um, we can have different kinds of expansions going on. So just to summarize that, Language processors um, are used in many things. I mean, it's used in lots of hardware design. It's used in lots of uh, distributed system designs. They, they occur at many levels of the computer engineering stack. The general principles that we're going to look at is, first, we're going to talk about processing streams of symbols or streams of bytes. Once we've defined what those bytes are, we know what those bytes are, we then do lexin or lexicograph lexicographical analysis where we take individual primitive um, characters and we group them together into tokens. So this is where we th form things like words or numbers or operators or keywords, sort of meaningful lumps of characters. Once we've split the stream up into these, these sort of tokens or words, we then want to know, well, what's the structure that's imposed on those words? So parsing is the process of grouping tokens together using a grammar into usually some kind of hierarchical representation where we have things like statements or expressions, functions, and those things will go in programs. Beyond that, we usually have to do something with that parsed data structure. So that, that can usually be seen as analysis. It, it's doing whatever you want the program to do. Um, the data structure itself usually isn't what you want. You actually want to parse in the data structure so that you can do something to it. Um, so in the context of a compiler, that's going to be things like resolving labels, checking types, sort of those kinds of things. Once you've actually got an analysed data structure representing your input, you then synthesise it into some kind of um, alternative representation or some kind of summary or something you do to that data structure. So in the case of a compiler, that's going to be once you've checked all of the syntax, the types, all of those things in analysis, then your job is to take that well-formed program and optimize it, try and get rid of things, uh, try and check certain properties of it, and ultimately optimize and then generate it as output, so produce it as a stream of bytes.